This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is my final, for now, review of the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip, the phone that bends and doesn't break, hopefully. So I did an initial review almost two weeks ago, and that was pretty detailed. So I'm not going to re-review the phone all over again, the specs and all that sort of thing. I'm going to talk about what it's like after almost two weeks with this device. We're going to talk about it now. But first, a word from our sponsor for this video, Gizmogo. They're the new guys in town that who buy devices. So if you're looking to sell your smartphones, your tablets, your laptops, your game consoles, you get the idea, especially with a phone like the Z Flip, because Samsung offers really great trade-ins for the S20 family. But with this one, the most you can get for a device is $350 because their margins aren't so great. So you best off selling it someplace else. So they offer free shipping. They send you a label so you don't have to pay to ship to them. You have a seven-day price guarantee when they give you a quote for your price. The prices are actually excellent right now that they're offering for a variety of devices. And in case they look at your device and say, nah, -uh, then they'll ship it back to you free if you're not happy with the offer that they give you. They offer a variety of payment methods, bank transfers, PayPal, a regular old fashioned check, even donating to charity if you want. So it makes it pretty easy. Now back to our video. So after almost two weeks with this device, I can tell you it doesn't get old. The novelty doesn't wear off being able to do this. And it's not just the fact that, yes, the screen bends well. It's the fact that I like big screen phones. I have a Note 10 Plus. I have iPhone 11 Pro Max, giant screen phones because I like them. But, you know, you think, okay, I've gotten used to carrying these big old slabs around. And once you have something like this, which you just fold up and you toss it in your pocket, and it's really nicely built, yet not that heavy, you realize, what a burden the giant phone was. So I kind of like that. I get the best of both worlds. Now, the only thing I would complain about between the Z Flip and the Note 10 Plus or the 11 Pro Max, those phones, is the screen is a little bit narrower. So if, say, you're reading an article on a website, then you're going to get one less word per line, one less short word, generally speaking, as you go across the line. It's not the end of the world. It's still like bigger than a regular S10e, for example, or a regular iPhone 11, that sort of thing. But yeah, it's there. When watching videos, it's still a plenty big enough screen. And yes, there's still a crease there. And there always will be for now. That's where the technology is because it's a foldable phone. It doesn't bother me. I said the same thing about the fold, but you do notice it with your finger and I leave it up to you. When the screen's lit up, you really don't see it. Of course, you will always feel it. When the screen's off, then it's more noticeable. Compared to something like the Galaxy Fold, which I also really like, well, the Fold is obviously more of a power user's device. It opens up to a tablet. You know who you are. There's two different use cases potentially, though I find them both really, very, very, very appealing. Uh, the fold is even folded. It's quite tall, but it's narrow, but it's thicker. It's heavier. It's more of a something to carry around and it is still more expensive, but they're both good in different ways. Again, it's really up to you to pick. Things that I don't like are the fact that the Z Flip screen just picks up fingerprint oils like nothing else. It's really icky. And I have very dry skin. I don't have oily hands. So this is mystifying. The fold even doesn't have that problem so much. So it's whatever they're using. So you'd say, okay, big deal. You can clean it. The problem is because this is a polymer layer on top of ultra thin glass, we're all a little neurotic about how we clean it and being careful. What I do is take a very, just damp, not drenching wet, paper towel with a little, little bit of soft soap to cut the oil and gently clean it and then dry it with a microfiber cloth. But this is a phone that still requires some care with the screen. So the fact that I feel like I need to clean it every day is a drag. It's also not quite as bright as something like the Galaxy S10, the Galaxy S20, the iPhone 11 family of phones. It's still bright enough to see outdoors though in sunlight, uh, but the plastic, the polymer layer on top does refract light a little more. So you'll notice it a little bit more when you're outdoors. Then there's the slippery factor. <laughs> Some reviewers have really just complained about this, said it slid off their wireless charger. I haven't actually had that happen yet. I have both the older style faux leather Samsung wireless charger, and I have the newer one that can also charge the Galaxy Watch Active and all that sort of thing. But yeah, it is slippery. And the included clear case, which I actually like because it doesn't add a lot of bulk and you see the beauty of the phone, that one's kind of slippery too. Not as slippery as the glass and aluminum phone is, but still slippery. And also that included case does scratch pretty quickly, which is a bummer. But it was free. I suppose there's that. So anyway, slippery phone. There will be a variety of cases. There's Samsung's own $79 leather case, which if it's as nice as the one for the Fold, will be a good pick, but expensive. And there'll be other cases on the market too. Hopefully some of them less slippery, because the last thing you want to do is drop the phone. Then there's the one-handed opening. For those of you who want that kind of 
original 2005 Moto, Moto Razor thing of you stick your finger in there and you flump the phone. I, I would not advise doing that with this because it's a slippery phone and because it's a stiff hinge. It's not really designed to operate that way. And jamming my fingernail and my finger in between the halves to separate it probably is a way that you could damage this soft screen. However, closing with one hand is pretty easy, at least for me, I have long fingers. Speaking of that, phone calls. I know some of you are still wondering about this. If the phone is closed and on your desk, you can use the teeny little front screen to answer a call and it'll just basically be on speakerphone. If you are on a call and you close the flip, it's up to you. There's a setting as to whether or not you want it to end a call when you close the flip or not. Now, if, you're, if you have wired or wireless earbuds connected, it won't end a call if you close the flip. Anyway, this is just when you're using the earpiece on it. Likewise, you can set it as to whether you want to answer a call by opening it or not. It's up to you. Call quality on this, speaking of that, is quite good via speakerphone and via using it like a normal phone and of course with earbuds. It's got a mono speaker on the bottom and it's, it's okay. It's not the greatest thing. It's not horrible either, but stereo would have been nice. I still don't know why the earpiece isn't the second speaker for a stereo pair on this. Speaking of that outer display, of course, I would have loved if it had a bigger display like the 2020 Moto Razor does. And in my other video, I talk about the trade-offs. This way they can give you a bigger battery, better cameras, and there's more room inside for them to put those things in instead. But the little display strip on the front, it's really surprisingly sharp. Even for my middle-aged eyes, you know, I have no trouble reading it, but it's not the most informative. When a call comes in or a text, you can see who it's from and the text starts to scroll and, and for notifications, if it's not a call that is, uh, but it, it doesn't stay lit long enough to actually read it. And I don't know why. This is a teeny, albeit bright display. They could have let it run longer and there's no setting to control that either. So that's a little bit annoying, which leads to the fact that you'll probably end up opening your phone unless you have a smartwatch to go with it to find out what those notifications are about. You know how you use a phone and it's up to you. I typically leave it open on my desk a lot of the time, so it doesn't matter. Then it looks just like any other slab phone. I just fold it up and close it when I need to go somewhere on the go and I throw it in my pocket. But for those of you who are constantly on the go and have it in your pocket and have it folded a lot of the time, then it can be pretty annoying. There are a few use cases even for me. I use the my Android phone for my grocery shopping list. And with my slab phone, I look at the list, do it and shove it in my pocket. With this one, I have to be a little careful and make sure there's nothing else in the pocket. I, you know, other than things like, and I always have a couple of like these little cough drops in my pocket. That hasn't hurt it yet in two weeks. But you know, no keys, no change, no nothing like that. If you wanna put it in your pocket open. At least Samsung doesn't tell you not to do that as Motorola did with the 2020 Razor where they just said, do not put it in your pocket or your bag open ever. This one, it's okay. In terms of the durability and how it's holding up, it's only been just about two weeks now, but so far it's fine. I don't have a single scratch on the display and the outside of the phone is fine. I don't do things like drop tests, hammer tests, attack it with pics or anything like that. There are other channels if you want to know about that level, but just normal, careful, everyday use in pockets that <gasps> might have a little lint or dust and there's no problems. This, this display is pretty well tacked down and pretty well sealed and the tinges on the corn edges are really teeny on this and they supposedly have those little nylon brushes in there to keep dust out. I'm not too worried about dust getting in here, but I would not go rolling around in the sandbox. So there you have it. Basically, that's life with the Galaxy Z Flip after two weeks. And I have to say, I still really like it. I like how light it is. I like the fact that it's thinner, easier to hold than my other big fabulous phablet phones. It actually is noticeable. You know, we all read our phones when we go to bed. How many times has the phone face planted on your face when you're reading it? This one's thin enough and light enough that really that doesn't happen. It's little things like that that actually make this a joy to use besides the fact you can do this and besides the fact that when you do that, it makes the most awesome desk clock. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and hit the notification bell.